Hello, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and I hope you're doing well today. We are here to discuss us knitting and crochet and loom knitting. Well, today, not so much crochet. <laughs> uh, I am Kristen Mangus. I am with Good Knit Kisses, and we are here at Good Knit Kisses to help you and uh, educate you and inspire you, equip you in your yarn journey, whatever that may be. Um, actually starting to add in a little bit of weaving, so this is fun. Uh, I am so glad that you're here today. I'm so glad if you're joining me live today, Welcome. If you're on the replay, yay, I'm so glad you're here as well. Most people do catch this on the replay, so don't feel bad if you've got to work or you got an appointment or whatever. Um, you know what? Just uh, pop it on later and listen while you while you work on your project <laughs> or clean the house. Someone's told me they've done that. They put it on earbuds. <laughs> anyway, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. And I have got so much stuff to, for you today. Today is clue number two for the stitch along, the Burnett Blanket Stitch Along with Joann's. And I am so excited. Um, we are um, just kind of trucking along here on the knitting one. We had so many people joining us loom knitting last week with the needle knitting. And big thanks to Joanne at Good Knit Kisses team. And she has been putting the loom knitting stuff on. And she put them on um, a few days after we released Clue 1 on loom knitting. But today... It's there now. <laughs> so if you are a loom knitter and you've been waiting for the instructions, go to the website now. I've got it here. I will be showing it to you. I will be doing a, a demo on here because you haven't maybe um, done this one on the loom before. And it's, it does have a special setup row. So you do want to see that. And then you could just fly along. So if you haven't joined us so far on the knit along, uh, I am so glad if you would test it and, and try it. Um, um, and wet your whistle because I think you're going to be excited. And if you are a beginner, this really is a good one for you because we're building our skills. We're growing as we go along. And it's not too long to join. Uh, it's not too late to join us because last week we made the two strips for clue one. This week, you're doing half as much. It's only one strip. So um, you'll be working on that, uh, whether you're on needles or on the loom. And I don't know what they're doing in the crochet land. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. <laughs> so if you finish early this week, Joanne's got several good suggestions for you. So hop over to the blog to see what those are. It's She's got some good ones. So uh, anyway, good morning, everyone. I see Joanne has jumped on. Hello, hello. I'm going to scroll back up and say hello before we get jumping in. Hey, Heather, I see you're in here. And Elizabeth and Jenny. Hi, Robin, Patricia. Hi, Eva and Lexi. Hey, Trish. Can't wait to hear about the brioche stitch on the looms. Thanks, Trish. I'm excited about that, too. We should have that up and running very soon. Sandy in New York. Welcome. And let's see. Oh, we got, yep, we got Joanna. Hey, Ellie, I see you're there. And uh, yeah, good morning, sunshine. She's got her coffee symbol. Okay, I think it's time for me to get my coffee because Ellie, Ellie's waking me up with it. Mmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. Oh, stop. It's just French vanilla. <laughs> waffle? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we could do a waffle stitch. Good morning. Good morning. Let's see who else is joining us. Hey, Mickey and Steve Elizabeth. I don't know. Okay, Steve Elizabeth. Answer. Riddle me this. I don't know if I'm going to remember later. Is this Steve? Or is this Elizabeth? There are so many like joint um, husband wife teams that joint like have the same like Facebook name, and I'm like, who's talking to me? <laughs> Don't cheat now. Hey Susan, <laughs> Steve Elizabeth says yes to coffee. Woo woo. <laughs> oh, says it's Elizabeth. Steve would not be caught dead on here. <laughs> I should send Steve a message. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steve, you know you want to try it. Oh, my goodness. Join your wife. Get in on the fun. Hey, Tammy, good morning. She's in Milwaukee. Uh, Joanne, nice coffee, waffles, and yarn. Yeah. Did you break bread together? Anybody else having breakfast? If you're on the other side of the world, good evening, and um, you're probably going to bed. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Laura said that would be awesome if he did. Yes, it would be. Oh, Y'all, you know, I have tried and tried to get my husband to join in on us. And I'm like, honey, you don't understand what you're missing. I mean, you really don't. You don't understand. I think if you did it, your mind would totally be blown and changed. I mean, really. Alas, no. <laughs> so his days changed off. Cha changed off. I can't even talk. Uh, my husband's days off changed and now he's off today. And I'm like, I'm broadcasting, but I'm like, I want to be with you guys, <laughs> but he is here today. <laughs> so, um, but I'm like, Hey, you can knit along with me if you're here. <laughs> hey, Deborah, I see you. Um, Hey, Jeannie from the Hoosier state. Jean, Jean, it's Jean, not Jean, Jeannie. Hey, Charlotte. Hey, Marie. Okay, so we are here. We're ready. We got several people hopping on. Hi, if you just joined me, Christina, good knit kisses. Get your um, iPad, get your laptop, notebook, whatever. Go to goodknitkisses.com. I'm going to put the link. I'm just going to pop in the show notes here. And unless Joanne has got the link, she probably does. You know, I'm going to let her do that. So the link for um, the stitch along on the Good Knit Kisses blog is there. Please be sure and read that. We've been really revamping the blog. Um, I would love for you guys to join us up. If you will um, go while you're on the website, click on the uh, newsletter and uh, sign up for that if you're not on it already. And uh, man, just uh, feel free to explore on Good Knit Kisses. There's lots of good resources on there. So I would love for you to just stay and kind of visit for a little bit and see what you've been missing because there's a lot in there. <laughs> oh, Jeannie, like I dream of Jeannie. Boing. <laughs> Thank you for that link there, Joe. Hey, Carol. All right. So today we've got the stitch along. I'm so excited about it because um, that means we ha we're on week two and we've got um, more weeks coming with um, some really fun stuff coming. I can't, you know, it's so hard not to tell you. <laughs> okay, so if you joined me last week and you are a loom knitter and you want to know what looms to get, um, that's out of my head now. But I am going to demonstrate on here, on this one. I demonstrated on this last week for what you need for the loom. And I want to get into that to um, to honor the loom knitters who are in here just for that. So let's do that at the very beginning, shall we? Uh, I'm going to flip the camera here in a second and show you. Um, I'm just getting my stuff ready. And uh, I've got to turn on some lighting here. Oh, hey, Linda in Temple, Texas. Welcome. Marie says it's cold in North Dakota. You know, I meant to put on my hat and stuff, and, and I didn't. I was going to put, like, a cowl on. Anyway, oh, do y'all see some of the brioche in the background? Isn't that fun? I know. It's it's fall. Happy fall, y'all. <laughs> I'm in Texas. I can say that. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Hey, Sin. Loomers. All right. Let me get in here. Ooh, I got something in the way, and you don't want to see that yet. Kristen, don't be showing stuff you're not supposed to show. And y'all are like, yes, you should. You should totally do that. <laughs> I was starting and uh, I got I got lost on time. <laughs> so hang on a second. I've got like a, I've got a yarn that's not behaving. Is that normal? That's pretty normal, right? Are you, do your yarns misbehave in the morning? <laughs> Mine are. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me uh, flip this screen, and we'll see you here in a second. Okay. Did I? I need to get some light on the subject. All right. So this is the website, and when you go to goodknitkisses.com, the home screen has a bunch of blogs. Just click on the first one. This is the first blog here, and uh, this is what it looks like. We are doing something this week called Knit One Below, and you have a happy friend from last week, and you'll be doing some more seat stitch. So you're only learning one new technique that you didn't do last week, which is this one. And this one's pretty important because it's got this little knit one below stitch. And you may find that you want to do this on more projects. So um, we'll get into it. So scroll on down and um, read all you want. And I've got some uh, news for you. If you are on needles, I do show um, fixing mistakes on the knit one below. Um, it's kind of hard to mess that up on the loom, so I'm not going to go over that right now, but once we get going, I think you'll really see that you like it. 
Uh, and then the, the video is here if you want to find it real easy. And then down below the video, do you see that? Notes for Loom Knitters. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you, Joanne. This may look weird on my iPad here versus the regular site. But anyway, so this is what you need to know for Clue 2. We talk about S-L-W-Y-I-F-P. That is slip with the yarn in front of the peg. That P is peg, not pearl. So uh, typically we slip a stitch unluminating or skipping and it lays behind the peg, but this time you're going to lay it in front of the peg. And so uh, I'm going to put this off to the side and um, whoop, we're seeing some other stuff. Um, <laughs> all right, let me put this to the side here, get my loom out and my yarn. And we went over, um, we went over cast on last time and we did a double E wrap cast on, um, this week, uh, I could show y'all, should I do the same? I can show you another way to get, because I'm going from, I want my first row, I want all my right side rows going from right to left. So I put my cast on on the left, start this way to go over here and I make sure it's a cast on that goes in one fell swoop. So I'm gonna count back 13, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, put that on. All right, so we did a double E wrap cast on last week where we uh, double E wrap like this. Okay, and then double. So two two E wraps, and then knit it over. Okay, but if you wanted to, here, let me see if I can zoom in. Sorry about that. All right, if you want to do the true knit one. Oh, not the true knit, the cable. You could do that instead. And uh, anyway, I'm just going to do the double E wrap. So I do have cast ons on Good Knit Kisses uh, YouTube. There's a whole cast on series for looms. So if you're not familiar with it, go check that series out. It's in a playlist. And I show a sample of what the edge looks like. So we're just casting on if you're just joining me. Nothing special. It doesn't have to be a fancy edge. Just got to get you over to peg one. Now this week I would recommend that you use the unit stitch or the um, the true knit stitch. Some people call the true knit stitch a reverse purl. Um, I I say that because I think all the stitches need to be nice and smoothed and lined up. So don't use e wrap stitch. Just work um, loosely with your yarn uh, so that you're not like super tight or anything. But yeah. All right. So uh, row one is going to be knit. Okay. So you're going to knit all the stitches. So you hold your yarn and wrap it all the way around like that. So it kind of makes a U, right? So we're knitting 13 stitches and the right side on a loom is always in front of you. So you never have to worry about that except when you're translating and converting patterns over from the needle. And when you're working on a flat panel with needle patterns, oops, they got a little tight, then um, you need to convert the wrong side rows. You don't actually convert the right side rows unless you're trying to interpret what the stitches are, okay? So when you get to the wrong side rows, you do the opposite that's on the needle because we are always working on the right side. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start a wrong side row which um, is supposed to be all knit in uh, needles. So we are going to um, uh, purl. Okay. So that's purl. Now, it would be all knit in the needle version, but on the loom, 
We have to do the opposite, like I said, but I have to do something first called a setup row, and it, I don't. We don't say this in the uh, um, on the website, but that's exactly what we're doing. We're it would be purl all, but we have to set up every other one with the slip and the yarn with the yarn in front of the peg. So I'm just going to purl the first stitch, and then lay my working yarn in the front. I don't have to worry about if it's below or above because I just need to hold this yarn here. Okay, and then the next stitch is going to be purl. So I just repeat this until I have two stitches left. So you're only um, purling half the stitches, which is nice because it makes it go fast, right? And I'm trying, I'm trying to keep this this one fairly loose. I mean, I don't want it tight. All right, so I'm purling this third stitch from the end and I have two stitches left. So I'm gonna look at my notes and it says, slip with the yarn in front of the peg and the last one, oh, the last one is purl, okay. All right, now row three, I'm going from right to left and we are going to knit one. So hold that yarn back here, give it enough slack, even though it's on the end. And then now I can take these two stitches together, all right, and I'm going to um, knit one below. Because I did not make a purl and put the purl stitch and the old, put the old stitch back here, this old stitch is remaining. So it's really easy to grab. And you're grabbing both at the same time. So it actually makes it easier on the loom. So I just go here and knit them together, but it's not really a knit together, it's knit one below. So I'm gonna come over here, and we've got, so we, we're gonna start alternating now. So we did knit one on the first one, now we ignore the whole knit thing, and we purl after we knit one below. So we knit one below, we purl, we knit one below, We purl, knit one below, purl, knit one below, and purl, knit one below. Oops. And purl. And the last two stitches are knit one below. And then we knit this last stitch. And we're knitting these last stitches because um, we're creating this selvage edge on it. And we did this last week as well. So that is the stitch repeat. So this is a stitch pattern. So you are going to alternate between the setup row and the knit one below row, and you just work back and forth until your piece measures six inches, ending after a row three. A row three is where you end on the left here. Well, you end after do, doing the row that has the knit one below. And then row four, you would come back here and you would knit all the way across Till you reach here so you'd be on the right as this is after you've knit your six inches right and then uh, so let me zoom out a little bit so you come back over here uh, you just keep going back and then knit your six inches get all the way back with just a purely knit row and then you're going to change to your contrast B so your other color and it will be in seed stitch and that is worked uh, you'll actually end up knitting one more row across in your new color and then that changes the color nicely so it's got a good transition on it. It doesn't have any any weirdness in the jumbling of color. And then you uh, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, and end down here. And then you do the opposite. You knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way across and you end with a knit stitch. So you just keep doing that until you've got your six inches and then you change back to your contrast A and then do this knit one below row as well. So that is how you do that one. And um, that's it. 
So I'm going to see if we have any questions, and then I'll move on to the next part here. Let's see if I can turn my camera back to me. Whoops. I can't hit that button. It's out of my way. Hey, uh, oops, let's turn that off. Okay. <laughs> How was that? Was that helpful? I hope you like that. Um, I think you may really enjoy it. I do have more things to show you, so don't go away just yet. Uh, we are, um, <laughs> I'm scrolling back through to see everybody's talking about the weather. Good morning. Good morning, Carol. I see you. Um, let's see. Hey, Pearl and Linda. Hey, hey. Um, we have, let's see, let's see if, I'm seeing if we have any questions. I'm just scrolling through. Hey, Karen, I see you jumped on. There, thank you. Joanne's got that playlist up for you. So if you missed it, we've got the Illuminating um, Cast On playlist. So thank you, Joanne. Hey, Rosa in Portugal. Hello, welcome. Uh, hey, Elizabeth. All right, so no questions. Was that simple then? Uh, hit that love button if you learned a new stitch today. Was that good? <laughs> So, um, are, do we have any needle knitters who are a little jealous, <laughs> uh, wondering, uh, uh hello, <laughs> that's easier because <laughs> on the needle, you have to find it. You have to like find that little spot. So yeah, <laughs> um, that's it. It's easy. Okay. Oh, Ellie has a question. I'm waiting patiently. Let me have a coffee break while I wait. What is your question, darling? While I wait on her, while I wait on her, uh, I have, um, oh, okay, sorry, let me go back. Ellie, confused on how it's not a knit to over. It's not because I would have to be moving a stitch from within the same row and knitting them together and reduce the stitch count. So what's happening is, so on a knit two together, or a SSK, you would put one stitch on top of the other from the same row, right? So with this one, we've got a row going this way, and I've knit half of them and let them fall down, okay? So, But the ones on either side of where it's being held is like still up here. You know, it'd be like taking a piece of fabric, I don't know, and like kind of doing half of it. And so I'm holding that stitch up from the from the column from that from that um, previous row up here, and then when I knit my second row, I put that on top of it, and then I sandwich them together, right? So it makes a little like a little smocking, like a sideways smocking. Yep. And then um, it doesn't reduce the stitch count because the stitch count remains across. It's still 13. I have not moved any. I have not done a yarn over. I haven't done anything like that. Does that help? Is that a better description? <laughs> so, um, we, uh, hey, Elizabeth. Oh, she does all three, knit, crochet, and loom. Sweet. Love it. Oh, Cindy, Cindy just, uh, she just grabbed her loom. Awesome. Okay, Ellie got it now. Thanks. Good. Okay, I hope that helps you. Yeah, um, I mean, and, you know, write me if you have any more questions, but we will put this replay on um, YouTube later. You're watching it right now on Facebook. And uh, and then we'll repurpose what we've been doing. Is, I'm sorry, my broadcast paused. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we'll put this uh, on, repurpose this uh, video so that you guys can see it on YouTube and people can find it later. But it will remain on Facebook as well. And um, that way people can see it. So I hope you caught that. Uh, let me tell you what is happening. Also, let me get my notes out. So we went over clue to, um, again, if you have not caught on the wave and doing the, um, you can do the stitch along for any three. There's the crochet along that Michael Selleck with the crochet crowd is doing. And I'm doing the knit along stitch along for needles. But also we are doing the loom. And man, loom knitters, I'm so proud of you. Thank you for joining me and knit too and just in putting that up on their page and um, just joining in and joining forces together be sure and encourage people if you finish early go and check out other people's stuff and comment on it if someone's got um, if someone's got a question um, will you help me out and let's and if you figured it out be sure and encourage them be like yeah you're doing it right or no what about this or I had trouble in that same thing how about this so let's just join in community together that's what that's for right so that's the Bernat stitch along page that is a Facebook page and everybody posts their work. You can hashtag handmade with Joanne 
and hashtag good knit kisses so that I can see it. Now we'll know it's a knit project. And if you are a loom knitter, if you could write loom on there, that would be awesome. <laughs> or write LAL, like hashtag LAL for loom along. That would be awesome. That way we can, we can know um, what that question is if it's not apparent on a photograph or something. Oh, Liz says she'd crocheted for decades, but trying to learn the knitting loom. I've got tons of videos out there. There's, there's several people who do the videos, and I've got them as well. So be sure and check out my channel. Okay, Amanda says, I wish I could do this, but maybe next time. Yeah, and some people um, have used um, this, or you can use the strips for like a youth scarf, a child scarf later for a, um, for a gift. So if you're only able to join us for the first two, like you don't have enough yarn, um, and you decide not to do a blanket, you could totally use it that way. All right, let me move on. So one fun thing <laughs> is on Friday, if you caught on Yarn Inspirations uh, on the blog, I was writing on the blog, for the brioche cowl, there is a brioche uh, accent knit cowl, and it's two colors of brioche. It's in the round, and it's lovely and squishy and so nice. <laughs> so nice. Uh, would you like to see it? <laughs> Smash that love button if you like to see it. And uh, I have now got it on the knitting loom. And the pat the video is like, on the cusp of me releasing, we're nearly done, and we'll be releasing that as well. Um, but the video you can find on the needles right now on Yarn Inspirations YouTube, and then um, you'll see it next month. I'll have it on my YouTube channel as well, so you can catch it there. You can catch it with me. Be sure if you go on their website, if, hey, if you want to comment and uh, say something, that'd be awesome too. So yeah, the blog is on their blog. And uh, we will um, have loom knitting notes on ours when that comes out. So that's what we're waiting on. We're going we're gonna, to uh, make all the notes. <laughs> so I don't have them all yet. I just did this on the weekends. So let me get you the brioche. All right. So this is the brioche. <laughs> and um, it's really nice and big and fun. Um, this is like you can, it's really like an infinity scarf. It's called a cowl. Um, mine, my uh, gauge is a little loose. But then you flip it. And I understand we're actually supposed to have a really warm, a uh, really cold winter with some snow um, in North Texas <laughs> this winter. I'm probably muffling my sound here. But uh, anyway, isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? So this is the needle version, and you can see it's fully reversible, and it has this edge. It has the cast-on edge in one color and then the bind-off in another color, and um, it's really nice. What I did for the knitting loom is um, something a little different. I actually am giving you a video with two cast-ons. Um, I'm really thrilled about it. it, and you may or may not like like. So I want you to make your decision on what you see when I show the video, but. Um, you can do one with a, a tighter edge that resembles, you know, it has like, okay, so this is the cast, uh, sorry, this is the bind off or cast off side. And you can do the cast on to make it look similar. And I show that as the second one, but the first one I show is super stretchy and it has this um, kind of an infinity sort of edge with a little bit of a pico look to it. So this is it right here. And it's stretchy. <laughs> so it has these little bumps on it and stuff. And if I was if I was doing like a stocking net panel or something, I might finish that off with a crochet hook, but it makes it super tight. I don't want it tight. I want it really loose. And so it actually has this really cool effect here. And it may look like my bind off is tighter on here, but I promise it's not. It's actually, I have a special bind off for you that you may have never done before. And because it's um, I'm doing it like a double knit. So this is in the round double knit using the knitting board rotating double knit loom uh-huh in the round here it is so i knit this more like a cowl size okay this is only six inches and because it splays out because it does that it actually can kind of function like a collar so you could even bake a big like chunky sweater start start of a chunky sweater or something but um anyway you can make it longer you can flip it over do a button whatever and see how it kind of lays down it would like tuck in a coat really nicely yeah i thought you might like that and then you could flip it over see that okay so this is that <laughs> Oop. 
All right, I got a notification coming on. So this is the brioche, and see how it has this really pretty stretchiness? Isn't that nice? And then uh, this this actually is, um, it looks like, here, I'm going to show you what the needle one is. So this is the bind off on the needle one, and this is the bind off on the loom one, okay? Uh, my gauge is smaller, okay? So if you're thinking, oh, this is like pushed out, my gauge is a little smaller on this one. Uh, anyway, I like it. I actually really like the way the loom one is. It doesn't stretch out too much. So um, if you don't know that knitting loom, let me show it to you. Sorry. This one. Okay. It has like a Lazy Susan bottom. And then this set of two looms. So you have an inner ring and an outer ring or circle. And then um, it spins around. So this base spins around and I, I did an unboxing on this a few weeks back. Uh, but this has actually worked all at the same time, all in one. I'm trying to get this oh, on the table. So yeah, you could put in a nice giant button on this or do whatever and flip it over. Um, you can knit it as long as you want. Um, this cowl here, they had you knit 12 inches. I just knit six for the sample. But um, anyway, you do as you wish. Uh, Robin says, and you knit that in the round on the double knit rotating loom. Cool. Seems like a wider diameter than I would have thought to come off. Yeah, you guys want to see it in perspective. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> this is how round it is. And you just saw how big the loom was. The loom was like this. Like that. So this comes out. It just it stretches. Now, what happens is, this is a super bulky six. I'm like... Yeah, it's a super bulky six. Um, it's a super bulky six, so it fits right in that narrow gap there, okay? So um, it's all squished up. And when it starts coming through, you're going to go, uh, I don't see the second color, Kristen. It's like this. It's all stacked like this. And then when it starts coming out the loom, it starts going like this. <laughs> and you start seeing the, the juicy goodness behind it. But it's truly reversible. And then you just see that nice little pop of purple. So if you want your favorite color on the, the main part, then you would, um, uh, and you want like an accent color, then um, you would cast on in the um, the other color. Well, anyway, yeah, you, this would be your A if you want this to be in the front. Anyway, I talk more about it in the video. Also, if you want to see what it looks like with the edge with the same color on either side, look behind me. Do you see this one? right there. That one is was my test one. So I had done a little bit of some e-rapidness, <laughs> some, some uh, twisted stitch on there. So it's not quite right. Um, I can't reach it right now, but um, it shows with a two-tone on it. So that's um, the darker green was my B color. And then the other was my A, the chartreuse color. Um, and so that's actually the, the reverse side of it. So yeah, it'd be a great Christmas gift. And especially if you like like a short side, um, it really knits up really fast <laughs> as you're going along. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's really fun to wrap it, <laughs> wrap the peg. It was kind of mindless. There's no purling. There's no purling. <laughs> so yeah, uh, come on, scrolling back to see any of the um, any of the comments here. Yes, thank you for that. Um, Good knit kisses. We have a uh, a link to that. Um, the brioche accent knit cowl on needles, and uh, we've got that. Um, Robin, yeah, Robin is pointing out um, we have the hat, which I have not re yet released the video yet because I'm waiting on the written pattern for the loom. But the easygoing knit hat is going to have a similar <clears throat> setup that we just did on here. Excuse me, I'm gonna have to. Is a similar setup, but you're purling one below instead of knitting one below. All right. So, gosh, that cowl is gorgeous, Trish says. Can't wait to loom one. <laughs> Elizabeth says, I'm using my pumpkin spice latte to hold up my phone so I can work. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever you got to do, girl. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, can I make it on a regular loom? Carol, um... You can make it on a regular loom if you single knit. So if you were to make it on something like this, it would retain this size. So it wouldn't be as big as this is. 
Um, it wouldn't be big enough. Um, you would need, and it, of course, it needs to be in the round. So you would need to work on it on like one of those much larger ones. And then you would also have to do some different things. Um, there's some videos out from 2 to 8, I think. Um, and, and then they've, and they've done like a hat in the round and brioche. So you would need to make sure you have a large enough gauge loom and you need to make sure that, um, obviously you can connect it in the round, um, and you'd have to use like this sort of single knit version. So anyway, I love the double knit and my gosh, that it really works so fast. <laughs> so, uh, not to be mistaken, it is not a machine, <laughs> but anyway, so you can still join along in the knit along. Becky says, um, uh, she's asking if we can still join the blanket knit along and knitting absolutely at any time. And these videos will not go away. They will remain on my channel. And in fact, I may release, um, the clue one from last week on Facebook, just so you guys can have it. I don't know if you guys would want me to do that, but Burnett stitch along has my video on it right now for this week. And, um, if you have questions in there, it, I found it super helpful last week. If you have specific questions, put it in the video notes on that page, and then I will answer questions there. And then if you post your photo, um, I can still answer the questions on their photo and stuff, but I have to scroll past all the, um, the, uh, crochet stuff to do it. So if you've got it in the video, that's really helpful. And it, it's great. Everybody else can find it too and ask the questions. So, um. Elizabeth says so much pro so many projects and not enough time unless you skip work and house cleaning. Yeah. I try to pick up as I go in the house cleaning department and then that way I'm not so overwhelmed. <laughs> Although I'm really bad at paperwork and yarn craft projects leaving out. That's my my vice. <laughs> I gotta I gotta get better on that. Um <clears throat> Tina, can it be made on a large oval loom? Yes. By the way. Um, the pattern calls for 124 stitches on needles, and um, the loom only has 52 on the inner and outer ring, so we have 104 stitches. So this is 20 stitches short, but the gauge is smaller. That's why this one is giant looking. This one's like probably 50 inches. It's actually, because mine was so loose, it's closer to like 55, maybe 58 inches, you know, all the way around. And then this one, oh dear. I did not measure, I didn't measure the circumference. Sorry. Oh, wait, let me see. I'm looking for a measuring tape. I can tell you. That could give you a better idea of the circumference of um, loom that you would need if you don't want to do the double knit version. All right, so it looks different when you double knit it. I'm just measuring across here. This is about uh, 17 inches, 17 and a half inches across, so double that. So, um, yeah, so it's going to be quite a bit smaller than the other one, but if you have, um, one in the round that you can do it, but anyway, if you want to do the double knit, the only one you can use it on is that DKL double knit loom. Yeah. DKL rotating one from KB. Uh, let's see what else, what else? Yes. Hence in videos, I'm usually behind. Yeah. I mean, take it at your own pace on the stitch along stuff. Um, I always suggest to watch the video first, work on another project that's kind of mindless. Just listen, just listen to tips and stuff like that. And then that way, um, <clears throat> if there's something I say later and you're like, Oh, wish I had known that before I went on, just, just listen first. And then when you go to, to cast on, remember that you can hit pause. You can also, um, if you're watching on a mobile, you can double tap to the right or left on the screen to skip ahead 10, 15 seconds or go back. You can also hit the, um, uh, settings and slow down the video or speed it up. So if I'm talking in the screen, and you don't like it. You can miss me up. So I'm starting like this. I'm not going to, you know, Hey, but it doesn't sound like a chipmunk. Um, or you could slow it down and then while I'm knitting, be like, okay, um, this is more my speed. So anyway, do whatever you need to do. <laughs> I can't do that in real life, but I can on video. Uh, Robin says, I don't have one yet, but you can double knit on some serenity style looms, but you can't do it in the round Robin. You would, ha if you're going to do that on a serenity loom, uh, or like I was even thinking, oh, well, I could put the wedge in and the Cindy Wood S loom and knit in the round, but you really can't because it's not connected. So you would have to stitch it together. This one's truly together. Watch the video when it comes out. You'll understand and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I want that loom. So 
Not saying you have to buy it. You could you could probably use the Cindy Wood Oval or something like that. Okay, so that was the brioche. All right, let me move my samples. And then what we also have coming is we have, oh, <clears throat> we have Stitches with the Mission, the GKK Pink Missions. These are the friendship bracelets. I'm going to be receiving these till about mid-October. They can fit in an envelope, many or as few as you want, and send them. And these will go to um, be um, put on a person um, when they're caring for them, uh, someone who's being rescued from the um, human trafficking industry. Um, it's going on a mission trip, and you're welcome to send those to my P.O. box. If you send them, please just drop me a message in my Facebook Messenger um, for not not my personal one. Send it to Good Knit Kisses, and then I know it's coming, and I'll go check my post office box because I have to drive out there to get it, right? So um, <clears throat> anyway, just wanted to know, uh, let you know about that. That's the Stitches with the Mission, and there's a video on that. And oh, my goodness. So when my daughter was recording, I was being silly, and I started recording her doing it. Did you guys see my, um, what did I call it? The uh, the tutorial hunter. <laughs> I made a little video like I was watching her, like the crocodile hunter. <laughs> I only put that on Facebook if you're interested in the videos app. She was laughing so hard. <laughs> she's like, after the, after it, she's like, I had no idea what you're doing. She doesn't know who the crocodile hunter is. <laughs> it's a tutorial hunter. That's how I've got a terrible Australian ass accent. <laughs> oh, oh, Carol, you made five bracelets and still making more. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Liz. Glad you jumped on. All right. Last thing. Last thing. The boomerang. You guys, do you like boomerang shawls? There is a shawl, um, looks very similar, not the same, as the hitchhiker. And I have had so many people ask me to make the hitchhiker shawl, and I can't because it's someone else's. But this has a similar look. It's not totally it, but it is a boomerang shawl nonetheless. And I've got a tangle of yarn, so pardon me while I get this ready. But look at this. This video is going to be coming. Look at this. It's one of those crescent shaped, look, and it gets bigger, and it gets bigger, and it gets bigger. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So it has that sawtooth edge, like this. So this is, um, this is obviously a whip. It's happening right now. So isn't that cute? I'm covering my mic again. Isn't that cute? I love it. It's really stylish. Cute's not the word. Very, very trendy. Very fun. So I'll be working on that. Um, I'm also going to um, give you notes on doing it on the knitting loom as well. So this is a video that will be coming out this Friday. And uh, I'll be recording it today, <laughs> actually. So, um, and then I'll be giving you notes on the loom. Um, if I find that I have time, I'll make a loom video on it. Um, but anyway, this is um, found here. So here is the ball. This is using a Karen cake. So it changes colors. You don't have to change any colors. Boom. This one is a uh, blueberry shortcake. Is the I know it's reverse uh, the the words are reversed on here. This is blueberry shortcake. Yay. And, um, has that little punch of like the blue lavender ish color. And then it's more periwinkle looks purple on screen, I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, and it's one whole ball. That's all you need. And then see the pattern is right there. Look at that. That's the pattern. So, um, I will be able to teach that. Um, and it's, it's in the ball band. Um, and if you get ball, uh, get one with a different pattern on it, um, you can find this on michaels.com. Um, is that the website for Michaels? Anyway, yeah, Michaels website. Is it on there? Anyway, um, so if it's not on your ball band, you'll see it. And then we'll have it in the show notes on the video when I do that. So um, I hope you guys are excited about that. And um, I think this would be even kind of cool if you put a button on here and let this like drape from that side too. It kind of reminds me of a dragon. Yeah, so nice. So this is knit, um, not crochet. Uh, Liz was asking, definitely, um, <clears throat> definitely that. Hey, Liz. Okay, so Liz has a question. She says, well, it's not really a question, but she's making a statement. She says, <clears throat> I, uh, Tina, sorry, 
Tina says, I don't really understand patterns or how to read them. Well, Tina, I have been doing all this year. I have been showing patterns and actually talking about them in the beginning and then doing it. So I'm really walking you through how to read a pattern. I also have other videos on how to read a pattern on the loom, on needles and crochet. And um, it's hard to say like, how to read a pattern for every single pattern because every single pattern is different. But um, I give an overview of how I approach a pattern and, uh, and, and then actually do it and then show you working one by one to find out what it is. Um, so anyway, go check out those um, how to read a pattern a series on Good Knit Kisses. I've got playlists and everything. And uh, Trish says, beautiful boomerang shawl. Loom knit, please. <laughs> uh, let's see. Liz is super excited. Hey, Tammy. She says, nice. Okay. <clears throat> Robin says, is there a specific yarn uh, that makes a good self-striping hat? The Karen cake looks good for the shawl or maybe a scarf. That is a good question. Um, you actually, you can do um, a cool um, effect called a, um, is it marled? Marled? Marled yarn um, that gives kind of a funky look using um, you can use the inside of the ball and the outside of the ball at the same time <clears throat> and when you grab it what's being pulled from the inside and then what's being pulled from the outside as you pull upward the outside one wraps around that yarn and you want to pull opposite colors you know so you don't pull like the, if it's the same color you need to pull out some and then let them match at like where they don't look the same so I would get it a contrasting color pull them at the same time and then that will give you some striping there's also other yarns out there that have shorter striping this is a long color excuse me a long color change so um, yeah it's not gonna be the same <clears throat> but that is a cool technique and several of the patterns that they came up with for the Karen cakes they did techniques like that and uh, to get really cool results so I hope that helps uh, Liz says, yep, yeah, without you going over the pattern, I'd be lost. Uh, well, I'm hoping to build your skills so that you'll be able to um, one day pick a pattern up and do it. And I would, I would really, really um, strongly urge you to when you pick up those clues before you go look at it um, with me, go ahead. I mean, obviously, I want you might go to my website and all that stuff. And obviously, I stay doing what I'm doing because when you guys go to my website or, you know, I get traffic and stuff, but my desire is for you to learn. So if you'll pick up the pattern, click on it, get it, read it through first before I start explaining it to you, read it through. And then when I'm talking about it, it will be easier for you to kind of like let things click, right? If you just let me talk to you the whole time and you don't actually read it first, it's not going to help you. You won't learn as easy and learn as well. So, um, try reading through the pattern first then push play, <laughs> right? And then uh, maybe something will click the next time, okay? Uh, and you can try that with other patterns. Um, just read the, read, reading them through like one or two times and kind of working through the pattern in your head can really help. Uh, Tina says, I also haven't learned about E-Wrap and Figure 8 yet, and I'm confused on others. We're going to cover some more of that. How to Read Patterns playlist uh, link is up in the show notes down here in the comments below, so be sure and check that out. Thank you, Joanne. Oops, I had a comment someone said. Jumped away. Okay. Uh. Oh, Denise says, thank you. It's been so many years since I read a pattern. I don't remember all the abbreviations. Also, uh, check out Craft Yarn Council. They have abbreviations on their site that let you know what they are if you are confused on something. It doesn't have everything because sometimes people make their own abbreviation for something that's specific to their pattern that does happen. And, um, but be sure and check out Craft Yarn Council, uh, <clears throat> and they um, they have generic abbreviations for crochet and knitting, and we're working on loom knitting. It's been like <laughs> a five-year project. That's all I can say. We're working on it. Um, oh, Robin says, what about the new tea cakes? They are smaller. So, um, I'll have to check it out. Now, the tea cakes are actually like a bulkier yarn. Um, yeah, I did one last night where I got like, 
a couple stitches less per inch than um, than the uh, Karen cake. So um, yeah, they're a bulkier yarn. Hey, Alicia. Let's see. It was around 3.30. Okay, I'm not sure what she's referring to. So it tells you what the previous. Okay, thank you for that. Um, okay, so we have a link now for the Craft Yarn Council abbreviations, and uh, that's the knitting ones is that she's put the link up for. So be sure and check that out. And uh, check out the rest of their page, and they've got lots of stuff on their website, good information. Um, let's see, what else? I'm looking. So we went over Clue 2. We went over the Brio, Shawn Needle, and Loom um, bracelets, and the Boomerang Shawl. That's the, called the Step It Up Knit Shawl, this one right here. Boop. And uh, I think that is it for today. If you guys have any more questions, you better type them in real quick. If you enjoyed seeing the Knitting Loom demo live, let me know. Send some love. Be sure and share it with your friends. Um, share it on the Loom Knitting groups, y'all, because um, it would be really nice for them to know that they can join in this stitch along. I want everyone to feel um, <clears throat> included in that. Um, also, if you did not check out last week, oh, look at the love for the looming. Yay! I see all that floating by. Um, last week, I did try and get Kelly with Kiss Looms on, and we had a hard time with the broadcast getting her in here. But I went over her looms, and I showed you a triangle loom. Uh, would you guys like a live demo on making a, um, a woven triangle on that loom? And then further, would you like a live demo with the triangle and then turning it into a square <laughs> let me see if i can show you uh, this is what i showed last week with the kiss looms plus she's got this new loom now and after our broadcast i made a trying my first triangle i haven't even woven in the ends yet i made my first triangle and then i made my square <laughs> i put one right on top of it so um i could totally make this um a live demo and we could just do that so Kiss Looms now has triangle looms. This is the smaller one. This is a 20 peg. And then she also has a 50 peg. So, um, yes, it's a new addiction. I know. <laughs> you could make a very quick uh, triangle shawl on that larger one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes to Kiss Loom demos. <laughs> Joanne says, yes, I want the weaving loom demo. <laughs> I, got, I got a reaction out of y'all. <laughs> Tammy says, weaving is fun. It is. Uh, I was really lost that day when you showed us. Yeah, it was a really random thing because I was showing all the different looms. Because mainly I wanted to have Kelly on and I wanted her to be able to chat with you about um, the looms and answer questions. And I ended up kind of doing it all myself and I wasn't prepared for a full-on tutorial that day. My apologies for that. We were having a lot of Facebook um, issues on broadcasting. So, Anyway, um, I think that's it for today. I'm so glad that you guys have joined me. Uh, I'm going to start filming, and um, I will catch you soon. So join me this Friday for um, another pattern release uh, on online on a video on Good Knit Kisses. And if you haven't subscribed, go to youtube.com slash Kisses. Hit the subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you get emailed whenever um, that happens and for notifications if I go live on there. Same thing here with um, Facebook. If you haven't, um, if you're catching this on YouTube, you can go to facebook.com slash Good Knit Kisses YouTube. You have to spell it all out and hit that like and follow button. Hit C first and click on the button for C notifications. And so when I go live, you'll get it popped up on your mobile device and you'll know Kristen's live and she'd love to chat with you. I like to do the chats on Facebook because I can see your comments and they don't go by really fast and then they stay afterwards. <laughs> so... I don't like how the live one on YouTube works, even though I should like it, but I, I don't. So, sorry. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me. You guys have a great day and happy knitting, loom knitting, and crochet. Bye, everyone.